Masters are an inspiration. We are wise and smart, and we roll with the punches. And we know a thing or two about kids and schools. It's all thanks to Betty G. Bernie and the world of Humphrey, who happens to be my distant cousin. Don't go away. Meet the author is next. The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Today we meet Betty G. Burney, the creator of Humphrey, the perfect classroom pet. Through the power of point of view, Humphrey's schoolroom observations, as well as his adventures, we provide readers with all kinds of insight about friendship and perseverance. Betty Burney, thanks so much for stopping by today. It's fun, fun, fun to be here, as Humphrey would say. <laughs> he surely would. <laughs> well, you know, there are going to be a lot of questions coming from students later on. Great. But I get to ask the first question. Okay. How would you describe, describe Humphrey uh, from, uh, for students as well as adults who may be watching that aren't familiar with him? I, I consider him a furry hero. <laughs> he's definitely furry yeah. because he's a hamster. <laughs> he's a classroom hamster, yeah. and he lives in room 26 of Longfellow School. And he believes his job as a classroom hamster is to help his fellow students, his teacher, his principal. And so to do that, he comes up with adventurous, clever, and fun ways to solve their problems. And he gets into all kinds of escapades. <laughs> he really does. He's a <laughs> he lot does. of fun to, to, to read about. But before we talk further about Humphrey, there may be something that people don't know about you. You have written for kids, books for children, TV for children and adults. You've even written advertising ads. What's the common denominator? And tell us a little bit about those experiences. Oh, yes. I've always had a job writing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't always writing books. Mm -hmm. uh, I was writing advertising, and that took me to jobs at Disneyland and the Disney Studios. And uh, then I went into writing children's television for a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved all that, uh, but I really like writing books for children. There's not a huge difference to me, because I'm telling a story. Mm -hmm. if, if you're writing an ad, I'm telling a story about a product. Mm -hmm. If I'm writing a book, I'm telling a story about a hamster. But I love telling stories, and, and I love using my imagination. Well, and you do it so well. <laughs> well, in just a few minutes, school children from Oklahoma Christian School and Oakland City Schools will Skype with questions and comments for best-selling author Betty G. Burney. We're also sharing emails and phone calls from around the country. Let's start with student questions from Oklahoma. Hi, Oklahoma. What are your questions today for Betty Burney? <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Hi, what's your first question? Uh, hi, good afternoon. My name is Kylie. Here's my question. We all have our own secret journals. Do you have a secret journal and where do you keep it? Uh, I keep my secret journal where I write my writing ideas, uh, and I think all writers do that. Um, I keep it close to me, so I mean, I usually have it on my desk, uh, but I put it in my purse wherever I'm going or put it in my suitcase uh, when I'm traveling. So uh, you want to have it with you because you never know when an idea is going to come to you. That's a great tip. Okay, what's the next question? Hello, my name is Kate. Here is my question. How many minutes a day do you spend writing? I've never actually counted. I'm kind of afraid to do that. I do, if I'm not doing something else, uh, like traveling or going to schools, I am in my office seven days a week. Now, I'm not always writing, but I may be kind of drifting and dreaming. I think you need time to be alone with your thoughts if you're going to be a writer. And luckily, I don't mind being alone. <laughs> Howdy, my name is Addie. I have a question for you. Do you how do you know when your story is finished? That's a really good question. I don't think there's an easy answer to that. Uh, some writers have a hard time letting go of their stories and saying it's finished, but the, there is a time when you really do have to let go of it. Uh, I have deadlines for Humphrey books, so I have to let go of them in order to meet the deadline, and that helps, actually. Okay, and I believe we have one more question, okay. Betty. Great, go for it. Okay. Hi, my name, 
is Hadley. My question is, did you ever start writing a book that you didn't get to finish? Oh my goodness, yes, so much. When I was growing up, I wrote a lot of stories and I didn't finish a lot of them. It took a long time to learn how to finish the story. Uh, but I still have a lot of projects I've started on my computer that are not finished. But I still hope I'll finish them one of these days. And we hope so too. <laughs> Oklahoma Christian School, thank you for your great questions. <laughs> it's so good to have you with us today. Stay tuned, we have a lot more coming up. Our phone lines will be open today as well. Give us a call. The number is 1-800-231-6359. Now, Betty, we're going to take an email from Mrs. Forcaco's classroom, that Forcaro's classroom, excuse me. They are in Arlington, Virginia, and this is what they want to know. Do the characters in your books remind you of anyone you know? I do uh, think back to when I was in elementary school for a lot of my uh, characters. I don't think any one character is exactly um, like anyone I knew, mm -hmm. but uh, little bits and pieces. But the character who is most like me is Humphrey. And I, we don't look alike, but a lot of what's inside is the same. So you have an adventurous spirit, too. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a question from Oxnard, California. And I have learned, and you told me before the show that you already knew this, strawberry capital of the world. Absolutely. All right. Well, Sayako wants to know, how did you come up with the name of Humphrey? I love that question. It's a great question yeah. because I usually, I enjoy coming up with names, and I usually don't have trouble coming up with names for characters, but I did for this hamster. And I, um, I finally went to a baby naming book and I was looking at boys names mm -hmm. with H for hamster and I came across Humphrey and I knew that was it because uh, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri yeah. and my parents grew up on the same street a couple houses away from yeah. each other. So all my aunts and uncles and grandparents lived in the street and my father and my mother were best friends from the time they were nine and I used to love to go visit my grandparents on Humphrey Street. Oh, that's and I have a real yeah. warm feeling about Humphrey Street. So you have Street. a personal connection Absolutely, to that. Yeah. Well, why is na the selection of names for characters so important as a writer? I, I, you know, I don't know what it does for the reader, but mm -hmm. I think it's just part of defining mm -hmm. the character. Uh, but a lot of times they just come to me really yeah. easily. I, I think it's the fun part. Well, let me ask you this. You've written so much fiction and so about so many different characters. Did you ever have to write reports in school? Oh, I wrote so many reports. Well, I, I did. did too. Sometimes writing a school report can be a challenge. That's why we asked Mr. Bibbles for a few writing tips on how to make your writing fun and informative. When we return, more about the writing process from Betty G. Burney. But first, how to organize your ideas for the perfect school report. Oh, goody! Homework time! Ugh, I have to write a report. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? I mean, got writer's block? I don't know what to write about. Any suggestions? My first tip, pick a topic that interests you. Oh, I can write about hamsters. Tip two, write down what you know about a topic. Include questions and create a graphic organizer. Like a mind map? Exactly! What kind of questions? Like, are hamsters nocturnal? What do hamsters eat? Are they rodents? To answer those questions, here's tip three. You need to do some research. So research? So I can use the internet? Sure thing! Books? Library? Check and double check. How about first-hand observations? Uh-huh! Next, you need a writing plan. So tip four, organize your information and answer the most important question in your report. Hmm. Well, how about why hamsters make good pets? Exactly! Okay, I'll make an outline. Good idea! Then start your first draft. Make sure your writing is interesting, which leads up to tip five. Grab your reader. Persuade them that hamsters make excellent pets. should have an interesting beginning and a good hook. 
the middle needs facts to support your main idea, and your ending should summarize your point of view. Remember, you don't want any fuzzy endings. Very funny. Okay, I think I have it from here now. Thanks for your help. Hey, no problem. Anytime. I thought Mr. Bibbles had some great advice. What do you think? Where was he when I was in school? <laughs> I know. Uh, very briefly, how do you start the writing process? Um, I start the uh, process with the big idea, the, the theme, yeah. for instance, a Humphrey book. If it's Friendship According to Humphrey, then I'm, I know that's the title or mm -hmm. that's the theme that's going to work okay. around that. And then I start building from that. I always know Humphrey's going to have one big, big adventure. And in addition to the problems his friends have, he always has his own big problem to solve that goes, the arcs the whole book. In every mm -hmm. adventure. Well, yes. we have a phone call. This is from Kate. Okay. Hi, Kate. What is your question today for Betty? You there, Kate? Yes. Hi, what's your question? What is your favorite book that you've wrote in? That you've written. What is your favorite book that you've written? Oh, you asked such a hard question mm -hmm. because <laughs> I really, I really can't say because I, you know, it's like asking a parent which is your favorite child, and it's very hard to mm -hmm. pick because any anything I work on, you work on it for a long time, and you know you have to spend a lot of time with it. So I always think it's the the next book, and I'm just finishing up book eleven. Imagination according to Humphrey, and that's the one I'm in love with right this minute. <laughs> <laughs> the, the current one. Yes, right. <laughs> well, Betty, we are going to connect with some more students. These are students we're going to reach out to from Oakland, California City Schools. They have some great questions for us, and they have some great comments. So go ahead, Quaker Highlands in Oakland, California. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, I love it. What is your question? Are you going to write a series about Og or any other animals? I don't know. Um, it's, I get that question about Og a lot, and I have to say, uh, I, I'm not sure. I kind of like the mystery of not knowing what Og's thinking. But I probably will write some more animal books in the future. I'm not telling any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have another question for us? All right. Go ahead. What kind of books do you like to read? I like to read all kinds of books. Um, I guess. I, I, when I was growing up, I did enjoy animal books, but I enjoyed a lot of other books, too. And I always liked mysteries, so I was really happy when I had the chance to write Mysteries According to Humphrey. I'd been thinking about that mm -hmm. for a long time. That's a great question. Yeah, it is a great question. Yeah. There he is. All right, go ahead, Robert. Why does Humphrey have a notebook? I think it was very important uh, for, uh, for Humphrey to have a notebook uh, so he could record his secret thoughts and kind of his fears. It, it lets us know a little bit more what's going on in his head. And as a writer, I do always keep a notebook. And so Humphrey's a lot like me, and he has to keep a notebook too. All right. Oakland, you had some great questions. Good Thank question. you. Yes. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Betty, my question for you is when you're writing for children, what do you try to keep in mind about your audience? You know, I, I, I don't really uh, make a big difference if I'm writing for adults or writing for children. Mm -hmm. It's more just the theme of the, of mm -hmm. the theme of the story or you know, the age appropriateness. Uh, so I'm not, I, I don't make any big adjustments to the, that I'm writing for children uh, because I think that um, the child in me is very much alive and, and well and I just can switch into that mold very easily. That's why I write for children. I like I'm a 10 year old forever. Well, <laughs> and and I think people from all ages, children and adults, we because I know we enjoy reading them aloud to children as much as the children love hearing the stories. I have heard that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's a lot <laughs> That's of fun nice to hear. Yeah. We have a phone call, I believe. Right. What is your name and what is your question today for Betty? Yeah, it's a lot of fun to hear. We have a phone call, I believe. What is your name and what is your Are you there? Garcia, I believe is your name. What is your question today? Hello, my name is Garcia. Hi. What would you like to know today? My question. <laughs> I think she's and getting a little feedback. Yes. And I want to know if you liked to write books when you were little. Oh, uh -huh. yes, I really did, Gracia. I, uh, I started writing books when I was um, 
seven, I decided I wanted to be a writer. And I wrote my first little book, and I gave it to my parents, and I said, I'm going to be a writer. And I never changed my mind. And uh, so I just have written ever since then. I wrote a lot of stories and poems growing up, a lot. I spent a lot of time writing. Yeah, writing's been your whole life. It really has, <laughs> okay. and it's fun. Yeah. Well, interest in Humphrey the Hamster runs high, whether readers are in the second grade or the sixth grade. Here are a few pre-taped questions and comments from Graham Road Elementary. Let's look and listen. What inspires you to write the book? Why does Humphrey keep a secret notebook? I liked how you included hamster tips in the book. I like how at the end of every chapter of Friendship According to Humphrey, there's a quote about friendship. Why does Humphrey have a cage that has a lock that doesn't lock? Okay, let's start from the beginning. They had okay. a great set of questions for you. The first was, what inspired you to be a writer? What inspired me to be a writer was just loving books so much. Mm -hmm. I just fell madly in love mm -hmm. with books when I was seven, and I felt, I knew right then I didn't just want to read them, I wanted to write them and uh, figure out how to do that. It took me a long time to figure it out, but I did. The next question, which you covered a little bit, which was uh, already, was why does Humphrey keep a secret notebook? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's a way into mm -hmm. his, his head. and. Uh, it's gotten even more important as the series has gone on. Okay. And why does Humphrey have a cage that has a lock that doesn't lock? Boy, I'm glad I <laughs> thought of that. If I hadn't thought of that, um, I realized when I started to write the book that he was going to have to live in a cage and in the classroom, and I knew I would not like to live in a cage, and he has to be able to help his friends and get out of this cage. And that's why I came up with the lock that doesn't lock. And most hamsters are great escape artists, so yes. it's not unusual for yes. a hamster to I know to from do, personal experience, they that. are great yeah. escape yeah. artists. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> we have a call. This is from Nicholas. Hi, okay. Nicholas. What is your question today? My question is, how cool Oh, dear. We, Nicholas, can you repeat your you. question? We couldn't hear it. I heard the last part about the books. Could you say, I'm sorry, can you say it one more time? Have you won any awards? Oh, thank you. Oh. Have you won any awards for those books? I, I have. Um, I've won an, a number of um, state awards that are voted on by children, including Oklahoma. We just had Oklahoma here. And um, it's a Christopher Award for Friendship and, and some other Children's Crown Awards. So they have. And I won a lot of television awards as well, including an Emmy Award. Oh, that's Which exciting. I'm very proud of, yes. And you should be. Betty, 10 years, 10 books about Humphrey. Has the writing or the planning process changed during this process and this evolution of Humphrey from beginning to now? It, it has, but not in a way that I can particularly, mm -hmm. you know, uh, describe. Uh, as soon as I sit down to write a Humphrey book, my brain goes into Humphrey mode and I begin writing like Humphrey, mm -hmm. thinking and talking and acting like a hamster. So. Um, <laughs> I just have to take more and more care yeah. to make it fresh and not have him repeat any of his wonderful things that well, he and does. And he's done so many things. Keeping yeah. up with I all of that is going to be a challenge. New. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have another caller. This is Sawyer. Hi, Sawyer. What is your question today? Um, did you have a hamster when you were little to inspire huh? you? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I've written a lot about hamsters. Um, I have to say, I have never had a hamster. I don't have one now. I didn't have one as a child. And I know that's sort of disappointing to Humphrey fans. But the truth is, I don't need to have a hamster because I actually do think and act and feel and write like a hamster. <laughs> I'm Humphrey. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Uh, you introduced another animal, Og the Frog, love his name, uh, in book two of the Humphrey series. We received a bar graph from Mrs. Forcaro's fourth graders, and they have a suggestion for you based on this question. If Betty Burney wrote another series, which other classroom pet perspective should it be from? So, before we show you the results, do you have a guess? I would guess a guinea pig, maybe? A, a guinea pig is a great guess. Well, let's show the results. <laughs> Students took the survey, and look what won, the turtle. Close runner-up was the bunny. Uh, would you consider doing a series about a turtle? Yeah. I pers my personal favorite is turtles, so I, lo I, I love their suggestion. I love turtles. Yeah. And when I was uh, writing the book, I knew it was going to be a classroom pet. I didn't know it was going to be a hamster. I considered all the different animals, mm -hmm. including a turtle. 
but I wanted something small and active and a turtle book could be very, very slow. <laughs> and so I don't think a turtle book in a classroom is in the future. All right. Well, I, I like the way Mr. Percaro's class was I thinking and, and looking at that information. And I, they did have some good suggestions I'm for I'm going to keep it in mind. OK. <laughs> well, we have another caller. This is from Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. What is your question? Um, where do you come up with the idea of using a hamster for, for the pet? Mm -hmm. Well, um, it didn't have to be a hamster, I wasn't sure, although the first little thing I wrote in my notebook said a hamster or a mouse, so that was definitely on my mind. I was in my son's science classroom years and years and years, years before I wrote the book, and they had all kinds of animals all around the room, including hamsters and mice and turtles, and they even had a boa constrictor that the teacher wore around her waist while she <laughs> taught. Oh. And I remember thinking, I wonder what all these animals think about what they see and hear in the classroom. And I thought it would be fun to write a book looking at a classroom from the point of view of a classroom pet, which I eventually settled on. An adorable hamster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another caller. This is from Navia. Hi, Navia. What is your question? Um, my question is, my question is, um, my question is, what did you learn? What did you learn from all the books you entered, all the books you wrote? What have you learned as you've written all the, these books? What have I learned? Um, I've learned that, uh, is, you know, writing a book over and over about the same character, I've, I've learned to continually dig a little deeper mm -hmm. into myself and that character to come up with stories. And uh, my television series work actually helped me with that, that, you know, sometimes when there's no idea, there are techniques you can use to come up with an idea. And so uh, there actually are endless ideas out there. You just have to look at all the possibilities. You do, yeah. Keep that notebook. When you have a good idea, write important. it down. I got tons of good ideas oh, in that <laughs> notebook. I'll bet you do. <laughs> when you write a book, do you have a series in mind or do you take it one book at a time? Uh, I don't have a series in mind and I didn't uh, start Humphrey. At, I just sold it as a book. I wasn't expecting to do a series. And then they asked for more and more and more. And I said, yes. Okay. We have another caller. This okay. is for Andrew from Kings Park. Hi, Andrew. What is your question? Andrew, are you there? Yes. Andrew, what's your question? My question is: In mysteries according to Humphrey, yes. In in mysteries according to Humphrey, is Piwak a real word? Oh, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, it was supposed to be a nonsense word where you learn what it means by the way it's used. And so I was trying to think of fun sounding words, and I am pretty proud that I made up the word pie whack. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a I think word. we should all use that from now on. Thanks for calling. We have time for a few more questions, and these are from Graham Road Elementary. So let's take a look. Why is a gym teacher so nosy and mean? How come Aldo wants to be a teacher and not a janitor? Why doesn't Miss Br Brisbane retire? Why did you give the kids long nicknames? Were you a teacher? Oh, another good set of questions. <laughs> Definitely. The first question was, why is the gym teacher mean and nosy? You know, I don't think she's deep down mean. Uh, I, uh, I, I hate to give away the whole series for people who haven't read it, but uh, after the first book, I kind of missed mm -hmm. having the, someone who didn't like Humphrey or who was a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I, I decided to put, not a villain, but put somebody in who wasn't just so nice. Mm -hmm. And that's why I came up with her. Mm -hmm. I love her, actually. She's one of my very favorite characters <laughs> She's to She's a write. great yeah. character. Uh, the next question was, how come Aldo wants to be a teacher and not a janitor? Um, I, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with him being a janitor. But he's a... Uh, he has ambitions. I think mm -hmm. he really likes learning. He really mm -hmm. admires Mrs. Brisbane, and I think he wants to, uh, you know, to try that. Uh, it's lonely for him being a janitor, and he'd love to be with all those kids. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. And speaking of Mrs. Brisbane, the next question was, why doesn't she retire? I hope you don't want her to retire. <laughs> I don't want her to retire, and neither does Humphrey. And uh, I think uh, she's just such a... Mm -hmm 
wonderful teacher, yes. she would want to continue for a while. Yeah. yeah, she reminds me of my fourth grade teacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> why did the next question that they wanted to know is why did you give the kids such long nicknames? Well, the, they're not just nicknames, actually. That's what Humphrey hears when he comes to room 26, and he he doesn't know anything about humans. So when he hears the teacher say things over and over, like mm -hmm. raise your hand, Heidi, because she never raises her hand he actually thinks that's her real name, or lower your voice, AJ, and he just continues that, and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. It was a lot of fun. The last question they wanted to know is, were you a teacher? No, I never was mm -hmm. a teacher, but I was a student for many years, and that's, <laughs> I remember it well. <laughs> All right, we have an another phone call, so let's find out what is your name today and what is your question for Betty? Kaya. Hi, Kaya, what is your question for Betty? What books did you like to read when you were in second grade? What books did you like to read when you were in second grader? Uh, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite books was Stuart Little, mm -hmm. and that's about a mouse. Mm -hmm. So I like that kind of a book. I also liked a series of Mrs. Piggle Wiggle books, and she was a nice lady who helped kids with their problems, just the way Humphrey does. And so a lot of those things I think have stuck with me over the years. Uh, that the seeds were planted from those books. Yeah, Stuart Little and Charlotte Webb, two oh, of Charlotte's my all-time favorites. And those are animals. <laughs> we have another caller. What is your name and what is your question today? Okay. Joanna, are you there? Yeah. Hi, what's your question? Was the Humphrey series based on your childhood? That's a, that's a hard question, <clears throat> not specifically on my childhood, but obviously when I'm writing the books, I am thinking about when I was in school. And so basically the classrooms I always picture are always the classrooms I, I was in. So a little bit, I would say, yeah. Betty, do I think, <coughs> oh, we have another phone call. Okay. We want to make time for it. Nicole, hi, what is your question today? Nicole from Greenbrier? Are you the only one in your family that writes stories? Oh, That's a good question. I don't know because there yeah. could be people writing stories that I don't know about. Um, the, my immediate family, my parents and my sister, were all good with words and good with writing, and a lot of people in the family were, yes. Okay, thanks for calling, Nicole. Betty, what's your best piece of advice for our young readers and writers who are watching and listening today? Write. You know, mm -hmm. just write. Write as much as you can and write for fun. And I think I, too many kids worry about getting published. You don't have to worry about that. You mm -hmm. know, you, you have a long time to do that. Um, I wrote for the sheer joy of it, and it didn't always turn out beautifully, but it, you need practice. It's just like playing a sport or playing an instrument. It takes practice. So I think a lot of people give up way too soon. Okay, Keep practice. writing. Keep writing. Keep writing. And very briefly, do you have any scoops for us today? <laughs> well, I do <laughs> indeed. I just <laughs> happen to have uh, a surprise in that there's going to be um, a new series of Humphrey books they're shorter stories with pictures. We're going to see oh. what Humphrey and Og look like. And they, starting in August, this is one of them, um, Humphrey's Playful Puppy Problem. They're called Tiny Tales. And there's another one coming out, My Really Wheelie Racing Day. That's hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that some of the younger Humphrey fans are going to find these a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Oh, a lot of fun indeed. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun talking to you about Humphrey and all your other experiences. It's been great to talk to you and all the great, wonderful students out there. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. If you would like more information about Betty G. Burney, visit her website at www.bettyburney.com. For more information about Meet the Author, check out our website at www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming.